All right, so we got nine assumed to fail video games that destroyed expectations. Let's get right into the video, man. We're excited about In this. In the gaming Let's industry, go. there are often two kinds of groups focusing on creating the products we interact with. The creative video game developers who do all the hard work building the unique digital world we experience, and yeah. the corporate executives who fund and edit the final product, with an okay. overall goal of appeasing shareholders and making a huge return on their investments. The following titles were sent out to die, only to achieve near universal acclaim from players, shocking oh, no. developers and executives alike with insane profits and positive reception. I'm okay. Sir culture.com and these are nine assumed to fail video games that destroyed expectations all right let's see man number nine fortnite Believe it or not, there was a time few people knew what Fortnite even was. The game was basically Epic Games' attempt at making a Left 4 Dead clone with the goal of convincing people that they should start looking outside of Steam. This was old Fortnite. This was old, old, old Fortnite. Whoa! Into places to buy games digitally. People received Fortnite pretty lukewarm. The story was fundamental, the gameplay was lackluster, and many people actually hated the art style, complaining that the game was clearly marketed towards children who weren't even old enough to play due to the game's initial T rating. In fact, the only thing people kinda liked about Fortnite was its unique building mechanics, creating custom forts to hold off the undead. Man, forts. hey, now in look at it now. In attempt to draw in players, Fortnite decided to take from then famous PUBG and apply its battle royale system as a separate game mode. Now look at Almost it now, baby. Almost and in a way far more more effectively than what PUBG, H1Z1, or any other battle royale have done. Not literally the greatest battle, ro battle royale ever. battle the unknown game into one of the most popular and lucrative titles ever made. Drawing in players yes, of all sir. ages and professional battle royale gamers, it practically funded the Epic Games Store, evolving into yeah. a worldwide phenomenon. Number eight, Doom 2016. Oh, man. I've never played Doom like that, but I knew what it was. High, and its software wanted to make sure the product they released was perfect. Halfway through production, though, it threw out all their hard work and started again from scratch. Cancelled because this version of Doom 4 felt too much like Call of Duty, you can still find footage online that only confirmed it were right to do so. Okay, when I was younger, I always thought that like Doom was like Call of Duty, but like the more like gore version of it. Now that I'm getting older, obviously it's different. But that's that's what I thought when I was younger. Even you after know? that, though, initial playtests were pessimistic. The multiplayer was poorly received, and people simply didn't like the game. Eventually, though, 10 years after initial development began, Doom 2016 was perfect. For fans of the original release and the beating heart of Doom as an IP, this felt like coming home. Doom's yeah, music, Doom. the tone, the setting, and the main character were all very well received by fans and critics alike. Even people who never got the chance to play the original games could enjoy Me. this fresh take on the classic run and gun genre, replete with secret throwback levels as icing on the cake. Oh, that's this the Number old, seven, the old Oh, dude. Originally following of who? I thought it was Tashima. I thought it was Ghost of Tashima. Did I have I been saying it wrong the whole time? Number seven, Ghost of Tashima. Oh, I guess I have been saying it wrong then. I thought it was Tashima, bruh. Originally, following an awkward Shakahachi performance at E3 2018, which in reality was a master of the instrument busting out a technique that is unbelievably hard to replicate, many viewed Ghost of Tsushima as an Assassin's Creed clone. Wow, at I, that I, time, I everyone was then. so wow. burnt out from Ubisoft's open world copy and paste way of game development that few yeah. were actually excited about the game. Even the setting of Feudal Japan did very little to deter people from saying this was just the Japanese Assassin's Creed game that Ubisoft didn't want to make. Thankfully, as a testament to just how phenomenal nominal Tsushima is, all that chatter went away immediately at launch. Ghost of Tsushima had a clear love and respect for Japan, balancing tactile sword fighting with optional stealth, plus side quests that reinforced the No, Ghost of Ghost to Tsushima, am I saying it right now? Small and large it's, it's, it's pretty nice, I can't, like, this that game is pretty hard. Its own feel, gorgeous visuals and a story that was up there with The Last of Us 2 and God of War's reboot. Ghost of Tsushima became a game of the year for many people, including yeah, it's a very, ourselves it's, for yeah, it's a very good game, I can't lie. Reason. Number six, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, now this, to say okay, the I've never played this before, bro. Preview cycle would be one hell of an understatement. Gameplay looked flat and repetitive, with the art direction feeling like this was glorified DLC for the already oh failing Avengers. Actually play the game, though, and this was way more character and script-driven, way more Mass effect -y than anything in the trailers. Uh, nah, Guardians not me, man. I can really... Just great. It's themes of friends becoming family hitting home for a lot of people, and we actually had effective use of humor in a Marvel product. With 
with some truly emotional moments juxtaposed against self-aware quips and black comedic beats from Rocket Raccoon. Viewed away from those naff trailers, the game was gorgeous, with a huge variety of locations and some stunning lighting across the board. Sure, you could only play as Star-Lord, but that was the point. You were squarely in the shoes of a leader of a band of misfit criminals, all with their own compelling reasons to keep fighting. Checking in with your crew and getting your Mass Effect on in between missions is what brings it all together. Number five, Star okay. Wars Jedi. I'm gonna be honest, with the whole uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, I couldn't really... <sighs> okay, I couldn't... I... <coughs> I couldn't... It didn't feel right to me. I'm gonna be honest. So that's why I didn't play it. Like I saw the trailer, I saw the gameplay leading up to it, and I didn't want. Yeah, it, it wasn't my cup of tea. I'm just be honest. Full in order. When EA got access to the Star Wars IP, they quickly remade the classic franchise Battlefront. The first was heavily flawed but successful. Then Battlefront 2 showed the company's greed on full display. It Bro, any the Star Wars game, the, the one that just came out, was hard. I can't and lie. And when Jedi Fallen Order was announced, it was met with skepticism and assumptions of microtransactions being hidden in there somewhere. Thankfully, as we found out on a press trip just before launch, this was an actual Isn't video he an game. Actor? Not only had EA the, let the protagonist of this game do their own thing, but but they practically the guy made is the actor, Star right? Wars Dark Souls, emerging as the finest Star Wars game in quite some time. There was lightsaber customization, a lovable crew of ragtag rebels, plenty of fan service, and even some surprising twists. Playing things humble and only really kicking into gear at the final level, this is how you reintroduce people to a yeah, series he's a, of he's an actor. I don't know they his already name, love though. without being exploitative. Number four, Dying Light. The run-up to 2011's Dead Island was something oh my God. else. With one hell of an effective announcement trailer, hype was through the roof for what should have been a unique take on the zombie genre. While it's safe to I say can see that why Island people has think, its oh fans, the vast majority, especially following buggy DLC Riptide, were monumentally let down, swearing off Techland for good. With the assumption being that Dead Island 2 is where it would all come together, instead Techland left the IP entirely swerving into trying again with another new IP that appeared to be Dead Island meets Mirror's Edge. Even as the game was shown off, the yes, general sir. reception was shrugged shoulders, as gamers were simply like burnt out light, either bro. by effective zombie titles or the assumptions that came with new ones. Nonetheless, Dying Light was released in 2015 and became a word-of-mouth cult classic. Some innovative first-person parkour felt immediately engaging, weapons were very fun to use, and zombies themselves would change across a day-night cycle, dynamically affecting missions and scenarios as the story unfolded. Dying Light may not have revitalized you know, the really zombie want, genre really want overall, another left but it was dead. such an entertaining I can't game to play by yourself or with friends, earning a slow crawl to the top of the game charts as we each gave it a chance. Even though Dying Light was kind of like Left 4 Dead. Indie video games are perhaps oh, the largest mixed bag of content you can find on digital. You guys know how I feel about Five Nights at Freddy's, bro. It's an amazing game. It's an, it's an amazing franchise. I can't play it, though, because I am too scared. I am too much uh, of a scary cat or a scary, scary cat, whatever you guys want to call me. I will, I will accept it. I, I can't play Five Nights at Freddy by myself in the dark like you guys will. You guys are absolute psychos. Bro. Little store friends. Sometimes like crazy, they're unique award-winning must plays that dominate a given year's discourse, and sometimes they're just copy-paste shovelware like the recent spate of jumping games on the PlayStation Store. Thankfully, the majority of indie titles you hear about now are worth checking out, with awesome gameplay ideas or stories to tell. But that wasn't really the case back in 2014. Oh, Lord. The developer of Five Nights at Freddy's, Scott Cawthorn, was barely known, and many of his earlier projects were downright terrible. When Cawthorn launched a Kickstarter for his indie Chuck E. Cheese looking horror game, he asked for $100,000 and earned exactly zero. Thankfully, Scott decided to go ahead and develop Five Nights at Freddy's by himself, with the rest being history. It turns out the simplicity of the game combined he did a, he did a good job though, bro. jump scares garnered worldwide appeal. Man, with asked for 100 grand YouTube and then he gave it to him. streamers as a viable career path, Five Nights at Freddy's became a gaming phenomenon, spawning multiple it sequels is. and spin-offs and creating a universe of sheer terror that everyone can enjoy. I don't. Into Middle Earth Shadow of Mortal. It really Have I heard needs this to before? be reiterated just how much headspace Assassin's Creed I don't think I've heard of this one before. Thanks to annual releases and the popularity yeah. Oh, it does look like Assassin's Creed. Time, this is, this looks like Assassin's Creed. Look something like Shadow of Mordor and assume Warner Brothers were cashing in. A former Ubisoft dev even outright accused WB of stealing code from Assassin's Creed 2. At the time, the Nemesis It looks like Assassin's Creed, I can't lie. A proposed gameplay mechanic where enemies would form rivalries with the player. Most thought that just sounded stupid and likely a surface level feature being leaned on for 
the marketing. Surprisingly though, Shadow of Mordor dropped in near perfect reviews. The Nemesis system was a standout next gen idea that boggled the mind as to how many factors it was tracking. Oh my God. Combat was supremely fun, rewarding, and fluid. Slice the head off. Copyright the Nemesis system, killing off an entire genre of innovation in the process as they've only iterated on it once in almost 10 years, but at least Shadow of Mordor was an easy reason to invest in new hardware. Talion and Celebrimbor's story was very satisfying, the Nemesis system created infinite stories from simple goons to epic warlords, and many felt Shadow of Mordor was part of Tolkien's work, even though it was a completely original tale. And number God. one, Pokemon Red and Pokemon. Green. Pokemon! You can likely walk up to any stranger on the street Bro, and ask them oh, what does man. Nintendo make, and they'll respond with Mario or Pokemon first. Yeah. With that in mind, it comes as a major shock to learn that the original Pokemon games, Red and Green at the time, were expected to be massive failures. Nintendo was initially confused when Pokemon created... Okay, but like back then, any game that was created at the time was expected to be a failure, if you think about it. Well, I, I, I guess... Okay, I need. I need to, I, this is why I don't pause the video at these moments because I need to know why they thought it was going to be a failure. Later, Satoshi Tajiri pitched them a game called Capsule Monsters, where players would acquire and trade creatures using the original Game Boy's link cable. Development of Red and Green was extremely touch and go, oh. and without legendary developer Shigeru Miyamoto, Pokemon would never have existed. Over time, Miyamoto helped really? develop the game and was also the one who pitched Tajiri the idea that there should be a pair of titles to build interest. This only made things more complicated, though, and by the time Pokemon was near release, many at developer Game Freak had quit because they just weren't getting paid, including Tajiri himself. Oh, Pokemon man. Red and Green were barely marketed by Nintendo, even at launch, leading to the game's real marketing coming from players telling their friends to get the F on these titles on a console people just really? weren't interested in. The two games' rising popularity led to the release of a third title sold as an exclusive magazine subscription reward called Pokemon Blue, with updated graphics and bug fixes. The rest, especially once the Pokemon TV show oh, yeah, landed in the West, yeah. is history and yeah. those are our picks for nine s well hopefully you guys enjoy that enjoy this video um other than that what i really wanted to say was imagine working on the game with somebody that really believed in their project imagine you know <clears throat> you're working with them and stuff like that and you know you quit because you're not getting paid um i would assume that that the guy um or not i wouldn't say the head of pokemon that the person that was like the main developer or like the head that like the head developer of, of this Pokemon game, I assume he was like, okay, once this game drops and we get some money, I'm gonna pay you guys. I, I assume he said that to them, but I'm guessing they quit. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not guessing. Well, no, they quit. And so imagine you quit, and then after the game drops and it gets a lot of money from it, like how would you feel after that? Like would you would have like I, I don't know. I would feel pretty salty knowing that I put a lot of time and effort into something and then I just quit. And then two weeks later, that something gets a lot of money. And now I can't get a piece of that money because I quit. I don't know, man. Maybe but maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Other than that, comment down below. Uh, what do you guys think of this video? Uh, if you guys like my reaction, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and like the video. I'll see you later for the next one. I'm out. And...